State board, the main crew of the expedition to the ISS is ready for the exam. The best one. So questions for you. The very first one is what day it is today? <laughs> I'm at a loss, don't know what to say. <laughs> Today is the International Radio Day. <laughs> so there should be no mistakes uh, in calm communication situations. <laughs> Questions? Uh, Maxim, could you say a few things about the upcoming examination? What do you feel and uh, how is it going to play out? The career always trying to get an excellent grade. It's our job. It's uh, the showcase of our abilities, of our knowledge. But everything happens. Uh, sometimes uh, we get good grades, not excellent grades. Sometimes we have to redo the exam. It's an exam. It's a complex thing, a very difficult thing. But we're always ready to go in and perform what we're supposed to do. And we do. We are eager to get good grades with uh, no comment. We'll see you in the evening. For NASA TV, for Reed Wiseman Reed, uh, you're an experienced fighter planet pilot. You've had thousands of hours of flight time on <coughs> multiple different airplanes. How would you compare your training now aboard the Soyuz for what's going to be your very first space flight? This is far more complicated overall. It's, uh, it's two years of training to get to the end result of uh, one launch for nine minutes. And so when you really look at that, uh, each flight in a Navy airplane is maybe a few hours, uh, but you do it routinely. And this is just one shot, and we have to know everything uh, on our own, basically with no help. So uh, it's two years well spent. And for NASA, and for ESA, for Alexander Berth, if you could answer in both English and in German, how do you feel about taking your final exams for, the so for your very first Soyuz flight? Well, today is the last day of my training. It uh, lasted five and a half years, so I don't yeah. think there's many more words that I need to describe that. Maxim, what's good? Yeah, today is the last day of my four and a half years training. I think not that I need to use so many words to describe how such a day is. Great. Maxim, what's good? Maxim. How fulfilled is going to be a work in orbit? How many tasks you are going to have? How extensive is it going to be? It's going to be pretty intensive. I'd say that each flight to the station is different from any other flight. And the events are different. But we do have an extensive uh, scientific activity. We have uh, three U.S. spacewalks, three Russian spacewalks. Uh, progress vehicles will be docking. New U.S. vehicles will be docking, Orbital and SpaceX. We have uh, the ATV vehicle from Europe. So it's going to be a busy schedule. Is there anything new and something appealing to you among the experiments you're going to conduct? As for the experiments, I think the best one for me will be watching my two crew members when they get there into space. This will be a really psychologist experiment, the best one. Thank you very much. That's it. Like this? And then like this? Yes. And your shoes. 
а не традиционный фон. What about the non-traditional way? Давай, 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 давай. Нет, нет, нет. Come on, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Поехали. Да, 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 да. Sure. Ну что, или как это? Да ладно, да ладно. And I send you him back. Конечно, конечно. Твоя камера? Нет. Это твоя камера? Нет. Кстати, нам бы это. Поговорить, может быть. Ну, потом там надо экономить. Я просто, знаешь, хочу туда влить. Ты сейчас все мне рассказываешь. We'll need to talk about this. Probably later by color. I'm thinking about the elevator. Это будет классно. Таких нет всех? This will be great. Do you have similar ones? The state board, the main crew to the International Space Station is ready for the integrated examination. He's got a lucky hand. We'll take a look. We'll see. If it's too cold, let us know. Will do. Uh, for NASA TV, from Reed Wiseman, how are you feeling after your, on your level of preparation as you prepare to your launch, to your first launch into space to the space station? In just a few Absol absolutely prepared. Absolutely prepared. It's been a long uh, but enjoyable two years for us. And uh, today and tomorrow, uh, really our final tests uh, before we head down to Baikonur, and we're definitely ready. The, the most special at, thing at, is Max at, and Alex. At least commander, yeah, <laughs> flight engineer. Uh, we, we do have some, some books that are, that are already up there from previous crews that have launched. Uh, but really, I think the thing we're most looking, or Alex and I are most looking forward to, the camera and the view down to Earth. I think that's where we'll spend most of our free time. Yeah, I have uh, memory items from friends and family uh, with me to give me an anchor to, so I don't forget where I'm from. Well, this is, this is my first flight. I think the most difficult thing is going to be learning how to float and keep everything with you and not uh, let, let all of your tools and your spare parts kind of fly away from you. I think uh, Max has given us a lot of good advice on that. But we don't use our legs, really, so it's going to be a whole new world to learn. Maxim, I go into blog. I don't know. Good question. I think my colleagues are going to Twitter. But we'll see. Probably I'll be sending down some short messages. Oh, of course. Uh, they'll be here this weekend. My family will be here this weekend. Oh, of course. 
Yeah, we'll spend the weekend together, all of our families. Yeah. Uh, Max, uh, each uh, uh, group of people has an uh, unofficial role. Somebody is the mindful person, somebody is a jester. Uh, how are those roles spread out within your crew? <laughs> He's the leader. He's the commander. <laughs> Official and unofficial. It's difficult to say because situations are different. In my opinion, our crew is well balanced. And uh, just as uh, it is difficult to say what's more important in your body, the head or the hands, or the lungs or the legs, I think in the same vein, within our crew, sometimes uh, Reed is the leader if he knows best, if he uh, has more experience. Sometimes it's Alex who is the leader because uh, he's got a wealth of experience, for example, uh, in uh, uh, surviving or uh, certain scientific matters. If we were talking about some generic type things such as uh, flight experience, I would probably be the leader. So within our crew, we don't really have uh, a well-pronounced leader, like say in the military, I'm the leader, so follow me. So I think we're very flexible. <laughs> flexible. Or emotional, somebody is the jester, somebody is the mindful, a very cold-blooded person. Something like this. I don't really know. I'd say that the cold-blooded, the mindful person is Alex, and uh, Reed and I are just military pilots. <laughs> More questions? Is this upcoming flight is going to be markedly different from the other flights? You know, each flight is uh, outstanding in its own way because they're all test flights and nobody ruled this out. And second, uh, each flight uh, brings about uh, things which are unique and uh, uh, happened probably once uh, in the entire space history. We expect everything to be smooth, to be nominal, that everything will be operational, that we won't have uh, many off-normal situations, but no one can predict. But our flight is uh, pretty intensive and uh, very well cut out. And we have lots of experiments, so it's probably uh, of a high degree. And besides, we've got spacewalks, we've got uh, three U.S. spacewalks planned, uh, and uh, the Russian segment is going to have uh, three spacewalks to outer space. Lots of equipment is going to come, uh, such as uh, uh, new U.S. vehicles, uh, two new types, the uh, European vehicle, Russian cargo vehicles. So it's going to be a very intensive and uh, fulfilled expedition. Are you going to do something special, some traditions? Uh, uh, just read something in the web. There are lots of uh, stories about uh, superstitions and traditions. What about yours? We follow the ones that have been set by our predecessors. Good luck to you. Good luck. Thank you very much. Here, I was going to be over with the Soyuz, but I Main crew, backup crew. Chair of the State Board, the backup crew is uh, ready for the exam. Everybody is ready? Yes, they are. And you are well aware of uh, our program, yes. Yeah, <coughs> 
We had uh, five uh, cards with uh, exam situations. We took out one. We don't know what's in there. It's a secret that is not reported to the crew. Uh, are you expecting some difficult cases that you don't like? No. All of the situations that uh, can occur during an integrated exam have been thoroughly worked through, so there is nothing difficult. What's the most uh, difficult uh, if you occur an abnormal situation that is, say, on the brink of life and dead? All of the cooperation items have been uh, worked through and uh, worked out properly. Our cooperation is great, and uh, unless uh, something comes up because of the mock-up trainer, then uh, we'll look forward to our instructors uh, because uh, the trainer is just a machine that can fail. But we'll be relying on our cooperation as in the real space flight. If uh, this is indeed uh, uh, so complex, how much time would you spend uh, on studying all of those issues? I cannot really say that uh, some exam issues or uh, questions uh, are hard, some are easy. We started our training a year and a half ago, so that's enough time to get ready for the flight. In English. Each other very well over the last two years. Uh, we work together very often, but we also do things outside of work together. Um, and so I, I joke with Samantha all the time that now she has two younger brothers to, to add to her family. Uh, well, on Sunday all day we spent together studying for this exam. So, <laughs> well, we do other things too. We go out to dinner. Um, uh, what else have we done? Very, very, yeah, we, we, we like to spend time together. Yes, yes, exactly. And the finalizing question. Anton, you are now nearing your second space flight. You have uh, one space flight already behind you. Is there any difference uh, between those two? You have a different crew, you are going to be commander again. Well, uh, yes, uh, I was a backup crew member two times, uh, but uh, I'm still uh, slightly nervous because uh, this is a new crew and this is uh, another step. And I have like young, a younger brother, say Samantha, who is flight engineer number one. <laughs> so my main task is uh, to prepare the vehicle and uh, to uh, follow the systems, uh, to monitor the operation of the system. So we're going to help each other. It's not that simple, this exam. Well, uh, the fact that you are going to be uh, here, you have uh, males and females, it's going to add a certain difficulty to your long duration space flight. There is no division into female or male activities in space. <laughs> Can you ask in Russian? What about you know, some female uh, type of behavior, like uh, can you s wake up and say, I don't want to do it now, or I'm a bit uh, cranky, so I'm going to cry. We are professionals, so uh, we're not talking about any differentiation between males or females. Maybe at school when uh, uh, kids are small, but we are grown-ups and we are professionals, so there is no place to such a behavior. Thank you.